Hey, what's up? My name's Justin, and welcome to 65 Drums. Today's another episode of 65 Questions, the weekly, well, it's not really weekly anymore. This is the bi-monthly show where I just answer questions I get about the world of electronic drums from you guys. Now, you might have noticed, or maybe I'm blocking out the entire frame, but I have an acoustic drum set behind me right there. That's my Sonar Force 2001 with some Sabian cymbals. That used to be my electronic set, and then I unconverted it back to acoustic. Now, there are some triggers still in the shells because I didn't feel like removing those. And the reason why I did this is because I'm going to be reviewing the Yamaha EAD-10. Basically a miking system and a hybrid system where you can add drum triggers and just change the sound of your acoustic drums. Literally nothing else like it. I'm still not sure if I would recommend buying it, but that'll be for the full review. So the first question of the day comes from Chris who writes, Hey Justin, if I buy a Zildjian Gen 16 cymbal or their L80s, and I connect those cymbal triggers to my drum module instead of the Zildjian cymbal module, will they work as regular electronic cymbals with full triggering capabilities? So ever since Zildjian came out with these cymbals, I've gotten this question on and off. What happens if I plug my Zildjian cymbals not into their module that they include in the box? What happens if I just plug that cord straight into my drum module? Now I can't tell you exactly what will happen, but I will tell you that you won't get all three zones of a ride cymbal working because there's no piezos involved in that whole system, there's no switches, and those are the two main elements that power 99% of electronic drum pads. What you basically have there is a miking system that just mics the cymbal and then that goes to the cymbal module. The cymbal module doesn't you know, have any MIDI or anything happening inside of it. All it's doing is tuning the cymbal, maybe EQing it, putting some compression on it. Now you might be able to get like some sort of like really crude uh, cymbal triggering going on. Then you hit the cymbal, there's going to be an impulse going into that trigger input, but it's not going to be very accurate and you're not going to get multiple zones. It is not built in any way, shape or form to work with drum modules, unfortunately. That would have been really, really cool because I just don't like the way the Zildjian Gen 16 cymbals sound personally. I've heard them used live, but I do like the idea. The whole concept was very innovative. I think Zildjian was the first company to invent the whole multiple holes in a cymbal that makes it, you know, 20% of the volume that it used to be. So that was pretty innovative and a lot of people have copied them since then. If you want to learn more about the different kinds of low volume cymbals out there in the market, I did a really big breakdown of all the cymbal companies that I could find and I'll link to that right here on the screen if you want to go learn more. Okay, so the next question comes from David who writes, there are over a thousand sounds inside of my drum module. How do I go and listen to them without accidentally deleting something? I have the instructions, but they're kind of confusing. And I totally understand that. A lot of drum modules, they have you know just pages and pages of instructions. They were written in a rush. They're not really easy to understand. That's why I like watching videos. I actually go and watch video tutorials on how to use like the Elisa Sample Pad Pro, but I always encourage looking at the manual because they do write out every single thing the drum module can do. And even though they write it in a very obscure, hard to understand way, there is a lot of great info inside of the manuals for drum modules. That's the only real way to learn every single thing your drum module can do. I believe David has a Roland TD30 drum module like I do too. And the best way to, you know, just hear different sounds inside of the drum module is to go up to one of your empty kits. So usually that's kit, you know, 80 through 100. On the Roland TD30, you just press the instrument button and then use the scroll wheel just to go through all the different sounds inside of the drum module. And if you lose track of everything, you don't know where the heck you are and you've made a bunch of mistakes to a lot of drum sets and you don't know what to do, you can always go to settings and then factory reset and that'll make it just like you bought it out of the box. I can't tell you how many times I've gone into a music store and I sat down to a drum set that sounds like absolute crap. The first thing I do if a drum set is a mess is I'll go to settings, factory reset, press execute, and that makes the whole kit sound way, way better. And here's the good news. It's almost impossible to actually delete a sound from your drum module. Most companies don't actually let you delete anything. If you accidentally press the wrong button, you can always factory reset to the way it was before. Okay, so the next question comes from Taylor who writes, hey Justin, I'm thinking about buying a drum set. Which would you buy? The Elisa Strike Pro, the Roland TD25 KVX, the Roland TD50 KV, the Roland TD30 KV, or the Roland TD25 K? Now that is a wide range of products right there. You have products like the Roland TD25K, that's like $2,000 right now, going all the way up to the T50KV, which is around seven or $8,000. That's a very wide range of prices right there. The first thing you have to decide is how much you're willing to spend. And to make your life really easy, decide on something that's like in a $500 range. So if you're willing to spend $1,500, 
that makes your life a lot easier because there's only so many drum sets within that price range that you can buy. So that's what I would do. I would narrow it down to a $500 price range and then go from there. Of those drum sets, you've mentioned a lot of great drum sets. The Roland TD25 KVX, I love playing that thing, but it's overpriced for what it is. When they eventually evolve that to the TD35 drum module or whatever the heck it is they're working on right now, then it might be a great deal. But as of right now, for most people, the TD25 KVX isn't the perfect drum set. Okay, so now I'm gonna talk about the very sticky situation that is the Elisa Strike Pro. There's like a whole Android versus iOS thing going on with this drum set. You're getting a large drum set with the best in class sounds, and you're getting it at a very rock bottom price. It's like 2,400 bucks, 2,200 dollars. I've played this drum set a bunch of different times in a bunch of different places, including stores and someone's house. The drum set is impressive because of how large it is. The pads are huge, they're giving you a ton of pads, and also the sounds are the best for the price. But uh, also, it doesn't feel quite as high quality as like a Roland TD25 KV or a Yamaha drum set around the same price range. When you're playing on the drum set, it just doesn't feel quite as premium like the, the components that are used and the, and the type of mesh heads that are on the thing. It's a nice drum set, kind of, if you do all the modifications. You actually have to take apart the snare, you have to take apart the toms, put some tape over the sensor, and then you have to cut a trench through the foam in order to make sure that this thing doesn't break in six months. If you do the research and you know what you have to do to make sure the drum set is gonna be working, this drum set could be very nice. But for me personally, I'd rather get something a little bit smaller that feels a little more premium. But that's just me personally. There's a lot of people that have bought the Lisa Strike Pro and absolutely love it. For me, it's not my drum set. It's not the drum set for me. Moving on to the Roland TD50KV, this is an interesting drum set because it's obviously one of the best in the entire world that you can possibly buy for any amount of money. But the problem is, it's any amount of money. It's like freaking $7,800. By the way, if you are going to buy this, I would recommend buying it from craftmusic.com because you get like a free drum throne, free kick drum pedal, free hi-hat stand, and other stuff you need. I'm not sponsored by them, but it's a good place to buy new stuff. Anyway, this drum set's one of the best in the world. You get the digital snare, the digital uh, ride cymbal. You get one of the best drum modules. Not quite the best, but one of the best drum modules in the world. The whole drum set is completely premium. It's got one of the best drum racks in the entire world. It's a great drum set if you're willing to shell out that kind of money. The Roland T30KV is a solid drum set, but you don't get the larger ride, the better you know, snare, and the newer sounds inside of the Roland TD50. So that's why you shouldn't spend anywhere near the price of a TD50KV. But it's also a great drum set, no doubt about that. I absolutely love this drum set and it's completely solidly made. And that brings us to the last drum set on your list, the Roland TD25K. And at this time, I would not recommend buying this drum set at all. Even though they just lower the price by like $200, on Sam Ash and a lot of other music websites, now it's selling for $1,800 when it used to sell for like $2,000. So that means they're trying to clear house because you can buy a Roland TD17 KVX for $1,600. You're going to get a 12 inch snare. You're going to be getting two crash cymbals and yeah, just an overall better package than this one, 100 bucks less. There's really no contest. The only slight upside the TD25 has is that it gives you positional sensing on the snare and uh, the TD-17 doesn't have positional sensing at all. But I still think the TD-17 KVX is a better drum set at a lower price. So whenever Roland puts stuff on sale, it's for a very specific reason. Either this drum set isn't selling very well, which I probably think is happening right here, or they're trying to get ready for eventually coming out with a new drum set, the TD-35 or whatever the heck is gonna be. It's gonna be a TD-50 light. It's gonna have a lot of the different features of the TD-50, but maybe not quite as many sounds, or maybe it just won't have as many ports on the back or something. I don't know, I'm really interested to see what Roland comes out with. Roland kind of temporarily shot themselves in the foot with the TD-17, because they made the TD-17 almost too good, because it's, you know, they're putting out something nicer at a lower price, but of course, it's just a temporary thing until they eventually release the successor. And no, I don't have any inside knowledge on this. I'm just really interested to see what happens. Okay, so that was the last question. Thank you so much for watching, and especially thanks to the people on Patreon who helped make these videos possible. Have an amazing day. See you in a few.